Today we are back on the Bowery to look at some of the old locations of famous places that are no longer here. There are so many stories to tell on the Bowery and I'm only just scratching the surface. There will be many more stories to come in future episodes on this channel. The first stop on our tour today is going to be the music venue that was once known as the Great Gildersleeves at 331 Bowery. This was once a hard rock and punk venue in the late 1970s to the early 1980s. The 1981 music video for the song Dead Ringer for Love by Meatloaf and Sher was filmed right here inside of this music club. Cindy Lauper held a concert here before she was famous, performing with the band Blue Angel. Also acts such as Elvis Costello and the Attractions, the Beastie Boys, Public Image Limited, Black Flag, Agnostic Front, Anthrax and the Misfits, amongst many others, also played this venue. The building was claimed by the city in 1984 and eventually turned into a homeless shelter. Across the street, we find a cast iron building that was constructed in 1874. Initially this building was built for the Atlantic Savings Bank and in 1879 it became the German Exchange Bank for the large German immigrant community that lived in the area in the late 1800s. In 1904 the German community was decimated by the General Slocum disaster. In a previous video I visit the memorial grave for the victims of that disaster and I narrate their story. If that video might be of interest to you then I will leave a link down below in a pinned comment. In 1963 the building was converted into a theatre by Honey Waldman who produced several plays there. From 1974 to 2006, it was the home of the Jean Cocteau Repertory Theatre. Among the many plays and musicals that were produced at the theatre, the first was The Immortalist in 1963, with Frank Langella, Danes at Sea 1968, Night and Day 2000 by Tom Stoppard, Brex The Free Penny Opera, in 2003 and the Cocteau's final production Jean Genet's The Maids X2 in 2006. The building was purchased by Adam Gordon in 2007 for conversion into a private mansion with a climbing wall and the Bowery Street front used for retail. In 1967, the building was designated as a New York City landmark and it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. The AIA Guide to New York City calls it one of the most sophisticated cast iron buildings. The next building of interest is Otto Mora's Magical Bazaar that once stood here in the late 1800s. This is where Harry Houdini learned magic and would soon perform across the street at the Globe Museum, which I featured in my McGurk Suicide Hall video. As I don't spend too much time in front of this store to relay the entire story, it might be better for you to pause the video and read this insert if you are interested in knowing about the bazaar. Unfortunately, it is always difficult to judge how long I need to stand at a location 
when I am planning post narration. Right next door was the world's smallest opera house, the Amato Opera, which had seating for 107 customers. It was originally a cigar rolling factory in 1899 and became an opera house in 1948 and remained as such until 2009. The last stop on our tour today is the location of what was once known as the birthplace of punk, CBGB's. From 1973 until 2006, this venue hosted an untold amount of unknown bands who would eventually be known around the world. The list is quite endless really, but some of the bands to perform here in the early days included and all photos being shown here feature the bands performing at CBGB's. The Ramones. Television. Blondie. The Talking Heads. Suicide. Elvis Costello, Joan Jett, Patti Smith, The Cramps, and The Damned. Like I said, the list of bands to play here is endless. Originally it was punk bands and later became home to the New York hardcore scene, featuring bands such as Bad Brains, Murphy's Law, and Sick of It All. But again, that is just a tiny smattering of the number of bands that played here. The club didn't cater too much to rockabilly music, which is my own personal choice of music, but I did see Robert Gordon play here not long before the place closed. 